Well, thank you very much indeed, OJ. I am very, very excited about this course. To a sense of call, of course, on Box Hill. And alongside me, as was mentioned earlier on, is Hannah Walker. Hannah, welcome into the virtual commentary box. I am looking forward to this race. The field is stacked. Hey, Matt. Yes, uh, virtual studio. It's uh, crazy, isn't it? Crazy times, but fantastic. And this um, this field is absolutely Fant you know, got so many, so much talent in it. It's absolutely uh, rip roaring, as we saw before. Alistair Brownley, Olympic champion, world champion. Then Tom Pidcock and uh, former World Tour professional rider Dan Fleeman as well. So I think this is probably one of the, uh, the, the best fields we've ever seen in a, a pro Zwift race. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. We've already got a, com a couple of kilometres down, so the rider's been warming up uh, probably for at least 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes as we look at the stats of the rider you just talked about there, Hannah. Uh, Hannah. Alistair Brownlee, no less. Now, we, we understand that he's never, he's been on Zwift quite, quite a bit, but never raced on Zwift. But just look at the stats that Alistair Brownlee's putting out already, uh, uh, Hannah. A couple of little ghost power-ups. We'll talk about the power-up side of things in just a few moments' time. But Alistair Brownlee on the front, ripping it up early on. Still 23 kilometres to go and really showing his colours here, Hannah. Yes, yeah, certainly is. And in my opinion, actually quite a smart move from Alistair Brownlee. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, around the three kilometre mark, it does start to uh, ramp up and there's that really uh, nasty drag up towards Trafalgar Square. So, yeah, in my opinion, actually quite smart of Alistair Brownlee to try and move up through the pack, get towards the front. It means he's got sliding room. And if there is any splits in this peloton, in this bunch, um, he's on the right side of it. Yeah, as you just see Ben Healy there, the Irishman, just uh, for Trinity Racing, the team, a teammate, of course, of, uh, of Tom Pidcock. Ben Healy, a great racer on Twitter. As we just go through this tunnel, this is just heading out, out of the city, along in an, if I can get my uh, geography right, in a westerly direction before we head into Trafalgar throughout that little drag. And then we head out into the Surrey Lanes and the first ascent of Box Hill. We have got a splendid field here. It is tremendous. We just looked at one of the American riders there. We've got a junior national American team riding. We've got uh, Magnus Sheffield. He was third in the uh, the World Road Race Championships for juniors last year in Yorkshire behind his teammate, uh, Quinn Simmons, of course. And we've got uh, one of their riders as well, Luke that's Luke Lampert-Pelty. He was 10th in the under-23 Paris-Roubaix. So we've got some really, really good riders here as we look at the stats here and that picture-in-picture picture of Patrick Wale. Again, this is a real insight, isn't it, Hannah, to how much effort these riders are putting in. This isn't easy at all, even right now. Yeah, no, it's fantastic to try and get this insight. You can see now the effort that Patrick uh, is having to put in. And it also shows, you know, it, it's not easy. You, you know, you, we might be looking at a, uh, a virtual... Uh, graphic on, on our screen however um, the effort required um, and especially in the early stages you know as everyone starts to try and move up through the bunch and sort of position themselves well and sort of test the test the legs as well as we see Magnus Sheffield who you just mentioned previously wanting to try and take a uh, dig off the front got a few bite lengths now Matt yeah definitely this is a surprise move and uh, this uh, this rider from the United States of America only well, 17 years of age and already putting in a big dig here. You know, can just see the stats on the left-hand side. 8.5 watts a kilo has now opened up a nice four seconds lead. And we've still got a long, long way to go on this course. 21.7 kilometers. And there we, there we go. You can just see the graphic on the screen there. Three seconds is the gap. But I think with the, with the bunch moving at this sort of pace and the effort it's taking to just stay within the wheels of, of, of the peloton here, Hannah, it's going to be mightily uh, difficult for Sheffield uh, to, to stay out in front on his own unless he entices a couple of others to join him. Well, yeah, as you say, you know, he could entice a few riders to come across. It does look like he's uh, going to be joined by one other rider. It's still uh, four seconds, so he's maintaining that lead. Um, but it is an early, uh, an early move to take. Uh, you know, we've still got uh, 21 kilometres left to go. But maybe he's just setting himself up as we start to start that drag up towards Trafalgar Square get himself uh, ahead of the game and also you know i don't know about you matt when you're a rider but sometimes riders like to test the legs a little bit early on um just to make that effort and kind of get yourself into that racing game get the head into the game as well it definitely will he's certainly putting himself in a good position here this is a nice little drag i did a bit of a recon a couple of hours before i got into my little commentary booth rode around the london circuit did pretty much what the riders are going to do today just to familiar us uh, familiar myself uh, my, myself if i can get my words out with this particular course it flattens out now 
It's a nice little tour around uh, some of the sites of London before we head into the Surrey Lanes. And we get to the bottom of Box Hill with about seven kilometers done. So we've got about three Ks now, as we've got a quick glimpse there of Lionel Sanders. We can't not talk about Lionel Sanders after his performance, Hannah, in the Ron Van Zwift. I'm gonna give you a couple of stats as the bunch just relay down this bit of a drag. now. Incredible stats uh, for Lionel Sanders in winning that race on Sunday, beating, of course, the Alperson Phoenix team. But he did—he set a new five-minute power for himself. Five-minute power, 534 watts. He rode at 590 watts for, for a minute, and then averaged Tan at 401 watts for the entire 36 minutes of the race. That's the kind of stats it takes to win races at this level. Absolutely uh, impressive. I think mean, when you put it like that, it's, uh, it's just unbelievable but as you say you know the, these, the power and the, the effort required to be able to win these races I mean you need to be on top of your game, game you know it's uh, riders are on Zwift racing training every day you know obviously there's the, the community races going on as well um, but it's yeah it's phenomenal the, the strength that these riders do have um, and he, you know he's quite new to the game as well as you said before he's kind of like got the call up Friday um, to race on Sunday and just blew blew the field apart. Well, it, it certainly did. It was impressive. I uh, I hope I take my hat off to him. It was a, a display of dominance that I'd not seen before. I certainly didn't ex expect him to be up there, but I certainly didn't uh, think he'd win in the way he does. Uh, we're just looking at Ollie Jones there on the left hand side, one of the riders from the Canyon ZCC team. He was the first ever winner of the Zwift Academy. Still all together, and uh, Christensen just moving up to the front there. It's uh, Christensen who actually rides. It's uh, Drew Christensen for the NTT Continental Cycling Team. They've got three riders here. And of course, Drew was the 2019 winner of the Zwift Academy. Looking at Townsend as well, a real interesting mix of riders. And really, although the road riders will want uh, something else to say about it, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see, um, as well as the race to the finish, the battle between the two of the most um, foremost triathletes in the world, Brownlee and Sanders. It's going to be fascinating to see how those two riders race today. Yeah, especially, and I think obviously uh, Alistair Brownlee will have seen how well Sanders did on, on Sunday. Um, so he's kind of probably got the bit between the teeth, although they've got rivalry uh, in the triathlete world, um, and how that's going to transpire today. Um, but I think as well, as you were saying before, you, you've got a mix of uh, road professional riders in here and, um, you know, riders that we see all, all the time on Zwift racing in the Zwift world um, the road riders you know obviously they're missing out on the racing due to you know obviously what's going on around the world and you know they're quite motivated to, to want to get to uh, get into racing um, throughout these past weeks so um, it'd be interesting to see how much you know you know they've got the bit between the teeth as well to uh, do well tonight Yep, certainly. You know, there are lots and lots of riders riding on Zwift at the moment. The whole Zwift community, this, uh, it's so great. You can now ride, of course, on three worlds in Zwift. Used to be just one, then two. Now you can choose from three worlds every day you ride on Zwift. And you can actually ride on this very circuit, race on this very circuit, just a few hours after this race finishes, as we are on the bottom of Box Hill now, just gradually winding away up the climb. Unsurprisingly, the pace really starting to hot up. And as a result, the, the bunch starting to thin out a bit. Sheffield on the front again, very, very aggressive so far. But as I was saying, you can actually ride in a few hours' time. You can ride on the on these courses. You can race on, on these courses. You just head over to Zwift.com events and pick a race that you'd like to that suits your capabilities, and you can enter and ride, or you can use the Zwift companion app. As we look and at Lionel Riesan, one of the most consistent riders out there. He, he should, unless he has a problem, should be a top five today, I think. Top five or a top ten. Great climber, really explosive. We'll love this sort of course. Yeah, he certainly will. And uh, we were having a chat about him uh, just before, weren't we, Matt? And he's experienced as well on this platform, on, on Zwift. Um, he's probably one of the most experienced in this race tonight. Uh, we've got around 127 riders racing tonight. I think that's probably the largest we've had in, in one of these races as well. So, um, yeah, the course suits him down to the, down to the ground, really. And uh, he's got a great kick, but he's a great climber as well. And he's got a very strong team behind him. So, you know, Canyon ZCC, uh, never to be underestimated. No, not at all. Another team that uh, got a lot of strength in depth is uh, is the Kalas eSport racing team from Norway. Gardner now moving to the front. He's from the indoor specialist team, Matthew Gardner, that distinctive kit with the, the blue and uh, orange fade. Gardner now setting the tempo just under 16 kilometers to go now. But the climb itself of Box Hill, many, of course, of you who ride in the real world and 
Onswerth will know this climb. It is an iconic climb in, uh, in Great Britain. It's not exactly a mountain, but it is, it is a tough one. It's not too steep. Average is 4.4%, uh, uh, sorry, average is 4.4%, but it goes on for three Ks. And the last 250 meters are actually pretty flat as well. As we see Brownlee now moving to the front. Again, very, very aggressive is Brownlee. I think it's, as we were saying earlier on, Hannah, I think Brownlee is almost just testing himself here, seeing how he generates the power on Swift, seeing how he reacts, and also making sure he's not too far back. I think he's just basically testing himself out, which is really, really good to see. Yeah, I agree. And as you start to see riders uh, going out the back here, uh, John Mold of the Rowan King team just starting to uh, struggle with that pace. Um, you know, but it's such a high pace at the front there from Alistair Brownlee, as you said, just testing the legs. And it's one of those climbs when you ride it on Zwift and in real life, it's one of those you can actually keep quite a high pace, um, but it's just it just drags on and on. And uh, it's quite uh, laboring after a while, isn't it, Matt? It certainly is. It's a difficult one. To, it's a, easy to get into kind of a tempo, but there's little kicks up around the headroom, around the, the, the hairpin bend, should I say, as we see Stedman. But look at Brownlee just riding hard on the front. And in the process, I mean, the way, I mean, John Mould, a classy, classy bike rider indeed, silver medalist in the Commonwealth Games road race a couple of years ago, out of the back and still putting out just under 400 watts, just shows the amount of power that you have to put out just to stay with these riders. Loads of thumbs up. If anybody is watching this for the first time, Riders within the Zwift community can give these riders ride-ons very much like a like on Instagram, for example. And Brownlee still putting out nearly 450 watts, tops out at 500. And we're still a couple, well, a kilometre and a half away from the top. This is an infernal pace. This is how sensational, isn't it? Being able to maintain that power. And, you know, see his heart rate now is spiked up from uh, 161 beats per minute. Now it's 179 beats per minute. So he just shows you how um, how hard and how much effort he's doing at 30 kilometers per hour, we must add, going uphill. Yeah, this is, uh, it is one of those fast climbs, of course. It was used in the Olympic road race a few years ago. It is a very fast climb. Many of the elite riders will, of course, ride it on the big ring. But you can actually get into a nice rhythm. But this is the sort of power that uh, some riders are really struggling to cope with. Be interesting to see as we go through the arch at the top. There is a King of the Mountains award at the top of this particular climb. And there is a prize for that. So uh, I wonder who is going to attempt that or whether riders will just keep their, keep their energy back a little bit pace them over, over the top and we again we we're discussing one of the little idiosyncrasies of this particular climb of box hill hannah is that there's no real descent immediately you go through the finish banner for the top of the climb then it's flat and then there's a nasty little 12 percent kick before the descent yeah and it's it's around a 15 to 20 second effort i mean it's so steep and you know if you do uh, kick off the gas after uh, when you get to the kom um, it's really hard to get back on top of the gear and, and get back up to speed um, because, you know, as you said, that kicker comes quite close after the uh, the KOM uh, point. But it does mean once you get over that, you can, uh, you, when we start to do the descent, have a drink, recover. Um, yep. And that is the only place, you know, where there is recovery on this circuit, I, I think, uh, in yep. my opinion. But, um, but no, yeah, definitely. they can get into that tuck uh, you, when it gets over 5% gradient so the riders can get into the top and they don't have to pedal yeah very very few opportunities on this course as you said to get a bit of recovery but that descent is is one of them remember this is going to be a hilltop finish next time through they'll have one lap to go a little bit of an invisibility power up being used by Brandlin Sam Brandlin going for the invisibility power up coming into view very very accomplished rider is Brandlin from the the Zwift well the Swedish Zwift riders team just round in the corner Interesting there. He's going to take maximum points at uh, the top of the King of the Mountains and maybe an indication of his form, maybe a little bit of a test there as he eases off. And one of the young British riders now rolling through. Vernon moving through. And there's confirmation. Brandlin from Vyasan, from Apers and Larson. But still all together. But when I say all together, Hannah, there's a lot of riders now out of contention and it's going to be very difficult for them to get back in. Well, yeah, there's a little gap there from uh, Vyasin and uh, Ethan Vernon. But as you say, you know, it's uh, riders all over. As we see um, a rider there with the aero power up, just timing it to perfection as we start to go towards that uh, short, uh, sharp gradient. You can see how the bunch has whittled down there immensely now. Yeah, Vang now on the front. A very, very good rider from the Callas Esports racing team. Actually, by trade, is a notable cyclocross rider. Just look how much, how many riders are being detached on that first ascent of Box Hill, primarily due to the pace being set by Alistair Brownlee. One of the Italian team have just uh, knocked off the front now. They've got a big, big squad here as well. 
a new squad called uh, the, well, the, the Italian racing squad they're known as lovely uh, livery and now we're finally on this descent we get the aerial shot of what's left of the peloton looks to me Hannah as if we might only have maybe 25 maybe 25 30 riders left in the in, in this bunch and it is very very difficult to chase back on once you've uh, once you've been detached from the group or the wheel on Zwift isn't it it's actually a little bit harder than the real world so you need to make a big effort to close the gap immediately otherwise you've got a big big task on your hands yeah it's it's now or never for any of those riders who have uh, been you know detached from the from the bunch it's, it's now or never for them to try and get back on um as you say the speeds are so high as well on this descent um it's yeah they have to make this effort now it's kind of one of those you yeah, either you can't hold back you can't hold back on your effort either um but also those riders here at the front they need to be alert and be aware of what's going on around them that you know to make sure that no other riders get the jump upon them yeah, definitely. Well, this group really whittled down. I think uh, the winner should come from this front group. Lundqvist now on the front. They can just see these riders freewheeling once they get to around 60 kilometers an hour. And if they stop pedaling on their home trainer, they actually get into this aero tuck. And as Hannah alluded to earlier on, this is one of the only opportunities on this course. As we look at Dan Bigham, one of the uh, well, ID, well, one of the outside bets for today. He is a team, current team pursuit national champion. And an expert on aerodynamics, in fact, and was uh, his teammate, uh, John Archibald, again, a very accomplished a road racer, time trialist. Uh, they were teammates when they, they got the bronze medal in the Yorkshire Worlds last year in the first ever edition of the team relay. So good to see him in the mix at the front there. Biasin also there has to be one of the favourites here. But no, I think the winner should come from this group. But one or two riders now getting off the back and one of, one of the Rowan King riders just getting in, infiltrated in the back of this move as we head back into the tunnel. Now, there's a nasty steep climb in this little transition zone. Yeah, this is another one of those uh, little stingers when you, you know, you're just about recovered. Um, you go through the, the tube station, it's straight back up and uh, a real nasty kicker. Um, hopefully, we, we might see Lionel Vuyas in how he uh, tackles this uh, tube um, underground uh, section of the course. But it's all about... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut across you. I just uh, this particular detail, I do love what the, what the design that, that the game makers on Zwift, the, the the game designers have basically boarded up the railway line there. As you can see, they've got boards to ride over. This is through the tube, and it's basically to link the centre of London, the city of London, uh, to Surrey. So they've come up with a rather ingenious little route, but does include this really nasty little climb. Look at the stats here from Lionel Yassin: 815 watts, just for like it's about 15 metres or so. Now they're just coming through the uh, the centre of the ticket office here. Thankfully, they've uh, they don't have to stamp their tickets. There's no uh, no gateway for them to go through. And now they're back into the centre of London. We've got another little loop around London before we head to the final ascent of Box Hill. Only six and a half kilometres to go. I wonder what these rods have got left because already there's going to be a lot of sore legs after that first ascent. Yeah, a lot of those riders will have, you know, now be thinking about the finish, but it's one of those where you can't start thinking about the finish if you're not prepared to sort of make those moves if, the, if there's any attacks or um, also, to, you know, to be aware of those, uh, those the rises. Obviously, we've got to go up the, the drag uh, up towards Trafalgar Square again. Um, so it's kind of now or never. It's uh, six kilometres to go. And... Uh, group i think a couple of riders might have got back to this front group so we've probably got a group of around 30 to 35 riders i think yeah Lionel i think Sanders so. not here in this uh, front group by my reckoning no i can't see sons ben healy just moving to the front for trinity racing couple of power-ups being used that's a surprising use of power-up and i think it's worth talking about the use of power-ups many of you who may be watching racing on Zwift for the very first time will be wondering what we're talking about when we talk about power-ups power-ups basically a part of the gamification side of Zwift. it's obviously a fitness platform it's a community platform but it is it's got a real heart of a computer game as well so the gamification very very important especially if you're making the transition from racing on the road to Zwift. Now, every time the riders go through a finishing arch, a gantry for a King of the Mountains, for example, a sprint or the finish line, they get a random power up and they get one of five. They get an aero power up, which they can use at the right opportunity, which is the best one for a sprint. That makes them more aerodynamic for 15 seconds. They can get a double dra a draft power up, which is the icon of a van, which makes them, uh, they get double draft benefit for 30 seconds. 
Then there's the burrito, one of my favorites, which makes the rider undraftable for 10 seconds. Then the invisibility one, which is out and out my favorite. It makes the rider invisible for 10 seconds. We can see them as we're watching the game, but the other riders cannot see a rider attack, for example. And finally, the one that may be used today is the featherweight power-up, which makes the rider nine kilograms lighter for 15 seconds, thus improving their power to weight ratio dramatically. So the gamification element, Hannah, so, so important in Swift Racing. Yeah, it's, it's very important. It's knowing when to use and how to use those power-ups as well. As we saw uh, quite a few arrows being used uh, just going over London Bridge. Um, very wise, in my opinion, as we, we will come uh, under another arch shortly. Those riders will be wanting to get rid of those uh, power-ups in hope that they get the uh, the feather power-up for the last descent of the climb up to Bo up Box Hill. Um, so, you know, it's so important to make sure that you, you kind of use them at the right time. If you have the, the uh, ghost invisibility uh, power up, using that to, you know, to your advantage. Um, and uh, as we saw, we've seen it before. Jonathan Levi used his uh, power up a few weeks ago in Tour of Watopia to absolute perfection um, and timed it, timed it great. Indeed. Well, there's a picture again of Alistair Brownlee there that's running for the All-Stars team, the Triathlon All-Stars squad, or the Super League Triathlon squad, to give them their, their correct name. Still putting out just under 300 watts here. Dropped off them a little bit, uh, well, from the power he was putting out earlier on. Perhaps, or well, not perhaps, I'd imagine now, he's just trying to conserve that little bit of energy. He's already at 21 kilometres or so. This has gone very, very quickly indeed. I cannot believe we've only got 2.7 kilometres to go. Um, not long at all before we hit the final climb for Yassan is there as well, just in the center of the group for Canyon ZCC. They have the team without a doubt with the most strength in talent, lots and lots of uh, options. Also Tom Moses, good to see Tom Moses, a former professional in the mix as well there, a rider we know very well, Hannah. Yeah, great to see Moses in action there. Uh, obviously, as you said, he's a former professional rider, retired at the end of last year, and he's now a, a tree surgeon. I um, mean, uh, spending a lot of time in the past weeks uh, back on Zwift, and, you know, he, he's very, very familiar uh, with racing on here. But, uh, you know, he's a very punchy style rider w uh, during his career. So this uh, t style, of course, uh, suits him very, very well. Is he racing there for Rowan King? The uh, kit is like navy blue with the, the lime green flex on it. Indeed, with the Rowan King team there, looking at the figure of one of the Italians just rolling through. And again, one of the Polish riders here just moving to the front from the ZTPL team. Just on the right-hand side, you can just see the riders watts per kilogram. It's the power-to-weight ratio. Just on the right-hand side, that's the order. Obviously, rotating, taking their turn at the front. Brownlee still in a very, very good position at the moment. Looking very, very comfortable. Vang still is there. McGlinchey, Dawson, Healy. An interesting mix of riders. And some of the riders I thought that would be in this front group have to have not made it yeah it's uh, quite surprising isn't it? and it's um you know it just shows you, you know, the, the people's uh, different strengths um depending on the course as well um you know notable ones that we, we expected to be there obviously uh, ollie jones uh, dan fleeman uh Vyasim, but uh, yeah definitely i was you know quite surprised to see moses still in this uh, front group uh, with no, all due respect but uh, mcglinchy very, another very very good uh, client, uh rider He's good on the climbs from Ireland. Yeah, Van der Riel rolling through there. This, uh, we just got the, uh, the stats have changed. 7.2 kilometers to go there. So uh, just the incorrect uh, stats were put up just for a brief moment there, but they've still got this little bit of a flat section before they swing over the bridge and head back into the Surrey lanes to, to, fire, to for the final ascent of the fearsome climb of Box Hill. And some of the stats we saw earlier on, very, very impressive. Again, Brownlee there, still in the mix. No sign of Sanders, as you mentioned earlier on, which is a little bit of a surprise. This is that nasty little drag up to Trafalgar Square before they swing left again. A couple of the young riders from the Great Britain team in there. Ribble, Ribble in the mix as well. Also some of the team draft riders there too. Swedish Rift, Swift riders in the mix as well. So an interesting sort of mix of riders as we head into the last uh, part of this stage. Yeah, and it's also an interesting mix of uh, ages as well. You know, we've got riders in this group who are 17, 18 years old, uh, whereas, you know, some, some of these riders in this group are, you know, 45 uh, and above. So, you know, it's great to see this mix of, uh, you know, ages and abilities as well. So, you know, some of them starting out their pro career on the road. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Rory Townsend, another rider in this group. I've just spotted him um, in the front group. So great for uh, Canyon there. Indeed, well, Matt Gardner just rolling 
Uh, Kuadahawa, low cadence there, looks very, very comfortable indeed. Just dropping back down. This is an, another, a, a very slight opportunity to get a little bit of respite on this descent here before they run alongside the river and swing back over the bridge and head into the Surrey Lane. Still 7Ks to go. Tom Moses moving through to the front for a rowing king here. And that uh, Polish rod that initially attacked, tentative little move has now been brought back to heel. And I think uh, the riders now are going to be wanting to try and save as much energy as they can for this ascent of Box Hill because it's going to be brutal. And um, I'm very, very interested to, to see which rider is going to... Are we going to see a sprint at the top? Are we going to see a rider maybe hedge the bets and go a little bit early? What do you reckon? Well, you know, I think uh, after the way that it was raced on the, the, the first ascent on Box Hill, the way Alistair Brownlee rode it, um, to be honest, I think it's going to be one of those where... You know, you, you can't uh, win if you're on the front, but you can certainly lose it. Um, so, you know, will Alistair Brownlee kind of sit, stick to the front and uh, just go hard from the bottom, but, you know, sort of take everyone by surprise? Everyone might not be expecting him to be able to hang on that long. We know, uh, you know, he's, he's got that strength behind him. Obviously, he's Olympic champion, world champion in triathlon. Um, but, yeah, Dan Fleeman, he's there. He's always in the top 10, but he's not really touched the front at all. So yeah. sitting there quite nicely... He's a very, very uh, wily rider, is Dan Fleeman. 37 years of age now, rode on the continent, um, rode uh, with, uh, with Dan Lloyd, in, in fact, um, many, many years ago on the Cervelo Test Team. But he's had some big wins in his career, former National Hill Climb champion as well. And uh, watching him race over the last few, uh, few months, in fact, on Zwift, always performs very, very well. Certainly got to grips with the gamification side, knows what to do. Not uh, spending too much time on the front, indeed. He's one of the riders there in that orange and blue kit for the indoor specialists. And he certainly is an indoor specialist. And I can see quite a few jerseys of Canyon ZCC as well. They performed so, so well in the Ron Van Zwift the other day. They didn't get the victory, as we know, but they had four riders inside the top ten. They certainly know how to race on this platform, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do. They are specialists at, uh, you know, e-racing and, uh, you know, Week in, week out, you know, no matter uh, what race, they're always there. Alex West is in here, Lionel Viasin, he's, you know, these are the big names of e-racing. And uh, they also know how to race as a team as well. And I think that's very, very important that yeah. it's not just about you uh, um, individually. Even, you know, obviously these riders are racing uh, from wherever they are in the world. However, it's about learning and, and knowing how to race as a team on Zwift. No, it certainly is, and it's worth mentioning as we head in towards the final stages of this race, it won't be long before we're on the foot slopes, the lower slopes of Box Hill. It is worth mentioning that many of these teams, as we just look at one of the youngsters, another one of the GB riders of the future, Ethan Vernon, 257 watts. This is going to start to hurt now. This is a long, drawn-out effort, a good six or seven-minute effort up this climb. But it is worth mentioning that many of these teams, if, if not all the teams, will have some, for, some sort of communication. They'll generally be wired up, there'll be WhatsApps, there'll be chat groups, they'll have had a discussion beforehand, and generally they'll have some sort of manager or road captain that's basically communicating and making sure as best they can they adhere to any plan that the team has got. Well, if you just see going into the uh, the foot slopes of Box Hill then, Ryan Christensen led uh, from Rory Townsend and then Max Stedman in his wheel there. So great tactics there from uh, Canyon DHB below Holmes. Um, yeah, fantastic teamwork. Obviously, they've uh, been overcome now by Dan Vermeulen of uh, the, the, Belgian, the Belgian team. Just taking a look at the stats of Christensen here on the bottom left of your screen. Yeah, Ryan Christensen sticking a lot of power in at the moment. This is uh, this is where I think this group are going to thin out. This is where we saw on the first lap Brownlee sit on the front and uh, dash the hopes of many, many riders upon the rocks of despair because we have still, although, as we said before, the group has swelled a little bit. A few riders just taking uh, the benefit of the descent and managing to get back in in contact. But it is Potsko of uh, Poland now on the front. 6.5 watts a kilo. Ollie Jones not too far behind. Dan Fleeman also in fourth position. Sticking out 7 watts a kilo. These sorts of powers so difficult to sustain. So a, a red hot pace at the bottom of this climb. And I think we're going to see a lot of riders drop off if this pace stays the same. Well, when the pace is this high, it's actually hard for any rider to try and come round. So, you know, uh, Poshkov, uh, the Polish rider there on the front, setting at such a high tempo, uh, 6.5 watts per kilo. You know, it's making it difficult for anyone to actually come round him. But in a way, it's actually perfect for those riders who like to ride at such a high speed and at a, a high pace to sort of lead them out almost. 
indeed well the, some of the riders will prefer that being taken in an armchair to the finish and sprinting a real sharp spike of power at the end but the, this sort of power is it's like a proper hilltop finish and one of his going to soon Alistair Brownlee fifth position at the moment moving up Ben Healy also there a former winner up the stage of the Tour de Lavenir James Fouch another very very good rider indeed riding for Hagen's Birmingham action he was the uh well, the 2019 New Zealand Road Race Champion IRL in real life. And a few riders, as we expected, Hannah, just starting to be detached. And the shape of this group, under the impetus of the pace being set by Ollie Jones, really starting to thin out now. Yeah, uh, great work here from Ollie Jones. It's uh, come to the front here uh, for Canyon ZCC. I think he'll be having uh, Lionel Viersen in mind to uh, to help him take the victory tonight. Just getting a look there of Ollie Jones. You just see the, the effort and uh, what, what it takes uh, in these races. You know, 178 beats per minute, 430 watts. It uh, really is incredible. He's making it look a little bit easy. It always amazes me when we get these picture in pictures. Some riders, it's quite clear the kind of effort they're putting in. But Ollie Jones always wears a little bit of a mask and he's always got that wet towel around his neck trying to keep as cool as possible. These riders, especially over a race sort of this sort of distance, they need to keep uh, not so much refueling as much because it is a, a very short effort, but they need to keep uh, hydrated. They need to keep cool. They can't afford that the bodies over. As you see, a power up being used on the right hand side. Fleeman goes 9, 10 watts a kilogram using an aero power up, which on a gradient of only 4.4%, there will be a big benefit. But he's gone clear. He's opened up a second over Vernon Jones and Vermeulen. This is a good move by the former British Hill Climb uh, champion. Well, this was surprising from Fleeman. We know he's a fantastic climber. Uh, maybe we didn't expect him to go this early. However, he's taken everyone by surprise. Opened up a three-second gap now. But which team and which rider is going to be the one to try and uh, bring Fleeman back now? You know, who's uh, got the legs? Who's got the power? Looks like uh, Ag uh, Agostancini from uh, the Italian team coming across a new to uh, the Zwift racing platform. 10.8 watts per kilo, Matt. This is amazing stuff. It is Agost, uh, Agostinacci, I think, who's come across the gap. A rider we're not too familiar with, but I tell you what, he is tearing this race apart at the moment, straight over the top, textbook style, over the top of Fleeman. And now the Italian is flying up these climb, and he's opened up a gap of two seconds over the Fleeman, and he's dispatched very, very easily indeed. And there are the stats of Filippo Agostinaccio of the Italian team, 445 watts, which equates to just over 7 watts a kilogram. Can he hold on? Still a fair distance to go on this climb. Good move, though. Yeah, very, very good move. It's six seconds now to uh, what was uh, the, the main bunch. Uh, Gavin Dempster there is uh, leading the way for that one. Ethan Vernon as well from uh, the Great Britain team. But, uh, yeah, this is a fantastic effort. McGlinchke there, the uh, Irish rider. Um, for Vitus up there as well, so he's got uh, a few riders clipping at his heels, but uh, what can the Italian rider in the lead do right now? Well, McGlinchey looking very, very good. The uh, Agost, uh, Agostinacci has opened up this uh, three-second lead, heading towards the top of the climb. It's going to be rounding the corner very, very, very soon indeed. It's not too far from at the finish line now. Agostinaccio could be pulling off a big coup here, rounding the corner, not long to go. It looks like the Italian is going to take a famous victory here. 7.5 watts a kilo. The sprint is opened up from Mills Keelan and Yassan, but I don't think, I think they're going to run out of road. The finish line is just coming. It looks as if Agostinacci has taken an amazing victory there. Went very, very early on, caught the rest of the napping. But what an absolutely magnificent victory there by the Italian. Well, his name is now writ large on Zwift. Superb stuff. What a move. Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. You know, time that to perfection, chasing down Fleeman, trying overcoming, uh, overcoming over the top. And uh, yeah, managed to hold on. It just uh, left it a little bit too late for the, the chases there. Viasin um, up there as well. Ethan Vernon in second place as we see the uh, provisional results of the top 10. But uh, yeah, that, that uh, time difference between the, the chases was soon uh, cut down short, wasn't it, Matt? It certainly was. Well, that's a wonderful ride by the 19-year-old from Great Britain in the second position. A former, well, former silver medalist in the under-23 time trial championships of the UK. But there we go. An Italian win in the London International. Vernon in second. Vyasan, ever-present Vyasan for Canyon ZCC. And also a good ride there. Another solid performance by a Zwift regular Sam Bralind of the, the Swedish Zwift riders in fourth. Then we have uh, Mills Keeling. 
uh, in fifth position, the Moulin from the Belgians with Riders in sixth. Teammate of his, Apers in seventh place. Then we have McGlinchey of Vitus in eighth. Ninth place for Fouché of uh, Action, the New Zealand road race champion. And then rounding out the top ten is Dempster of Team Draft, just over two and a half seconds behind. But that was a big, big battle, a great race. And I think it's fair to say, Hannah, a bit of a surprise victory there. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, a big surprise, wasn't it? If, if we saw, uh, you know, the, the regular names that we're, we're always seeing on, on in Zwift races, Villasin and, uh, and the likes. Um, however, surprising not to see uh, Alistair Brownlee in the mix there at the end, considering you know how strong he was on the first descent. He was there in the finish, but um, just in the, in the final couple of kilometres, just didn't quite have the legs. Yeah, I think it's, again, maybe he would have suited, a, well, although it was a hard pace from the bottom, I think it's that sheer spike, that real big acceleration that the riders have maybe come across on the road, have used Swift a little bit more, may have suited them. But I tell you what, Alistair Brownlee equipped himself very, very well, one of the main animators of this race. And uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful for the Swift community and for esports in general, racing on Swift, that the riders of the calibre of Alistair Brownlee, of course, a double Olympic champion, is actually here racing on Swift. It is a, a, a community, Hannah, that's getting bigger and bigger, better and better, and the racing is just getting even more exciting with different names now coming into the fray as well. Yes, yeah, certainly, and I think, uh, if, you know, been uh, riding and racing on Zwift for um, a few years now, and I think, um, especially doing the, the, the social rides this week in the past couple of weeks, just seeing the community and the way that everyone has uh, sort of embraced it and how many people are, are getting involved. Um, yeah, I think it's absolutely brilliant, uh, brilliant platform for people yeah, to get involved with. Indeed, well, it looks like we're getting a, a little bit of a, a little bit of an action replay. This is the the lower slopes of the climb of Box Hill. Remember, we had two ascents in this London International. A very, very fast pace was set from the bottom. A lot of riders uh, were detached, unsurprisingly. We had a big thing in out on lap number one as well. There's Ollie Jones setting the tempo at the front with that towel hovering at around 450 to 500 watts. Then we saw Fleeman go early on with about two kilometers to go. A tentative move by the British rider. But then Agos Dinaccio, he went clear with around 800, 700 meters to go, opened up a big gap and held it all the way. I must admit, I didn't think he'd do it, but he did, held on from Vernon. Great ride by the young rider from Great Britain. Well, that was an absolutely superb race. And just a reminder of the podium.